I've said it before, I'll say it again, and I'll keep saying it until the day someone somehow manages to prove me wrong. The Fallout 76 community is the best community in gaming, bar none. No other community even comes close. Prior to the game's launch in October of 2018, there were plenty of people with reservations about whether this online Fallout idea could actually work. Despite the fact that there was something that the community's been asking for for years. But not even the most optimistic of Bethesda loyalists could have seen the massive mountain of garbage the newest Fallout entry had in store for gamers, both old and new, to the franchise. They say that the reason that Elon Musk bought Twitter was because he was so mad that the Cybertruck wasn't able to out-disaster the launch of Fallout 76 that he went all in for round two. At least when Pokemon Scarlet and Violet launched as a buggy miss, they at least had the decency to be the best-selling Pokemon games of all time. Just a huge L on Bethesda and Zenimax's part on this one. Drop an F in the comments for Bethesda. By the way, hit like and subscribe while you're down there. Helps me out a ton. Thanks, gamers. Well-deserved roasting aside, though, the game was able to keep and foster a small dedicated fan base that stuck around through the disastrous launch and its early days where even seeing another person in the wild meant a one-way ticket to the Shadow Realm. Rather than abandoning the game entirely, those brave folk that played on from launch and the hardened wraiths that sold their soul to the PTS ended up creating something that I doubt anyone could have seen coming. Through some cosmic stroke of celestial alignment, or if Todd Howard was playing the biggest 10 billion IQ move in video game history, Fallout would see the rise of what may very well be its most dedicated fan base. And surprisingly enough, it's most welcoming. While there were indeed plenty of players who would just shoot first, ask questions never, there were just as many high level players, and even some not so high level ones, who were more than willing to give you the shirt off their back for nothing in return. I myself was actually a recipient of one of these random acts of gamer kindness. When I originally started playing it, it was like the Wild West in West Virginia. Going to a rail station to sell anything was almost a death sentence. I got a bunch of stuff to offload though, right? So I risk it. I'm trying to sell stuff as fast as I can when I hear it. The sound that makes even the most seasoned players pee their pants out of pure dread. The stomping of approaching power armor. You gotta remember, this was like month one. Anyone in power armor was basically a god. So I'm standing there, right? Just hoping that the reload doesn't take too long. And then I hear something that would change my entire outlook on gaming culture. Guy says, hey man, I got a bunch of stim packs I don't need. You want them? I'm in shock, right? Dumbfounded. My brain locks up like the gears in the engine of your grandfather's old station wagon. I'm so caught off guard that all I could do was turn around and say something like, uh, yeah, thanks, man. Guy proceeds to drop at least 10 stim packs, a couple guns, a set of leather armor, some food and water, and then he's just all like, all right, there you go. I threw in some extra stuff I didn't need. Have fun. And then just kind of <laughs> fucking left. It wasn't long after that I started seeing articles and hearing people talking about how high-level players would just hang out outside Vault 76 to hook newbies up with food and water and early survival gear. Out of the wreckage, like a blooming flower, the most positive and uplifting gaming community of all times was born. Helping out newbies for the memes wasn't the only good thing that came out of the Fallout 76 community, though. As just two years later, we would see the creation of the Fallout for Hope initiative, a charitable project created by Kenneth Vigu, the mind behind the Chad Fallout Story podcast. Since its inception back in 2020, Ken and the rest of the amazing streamers, gamers, artists, and talents have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charities like Love Your Neighbor, which helped to raise money for Texans impacted by the ice storms back in 2021. The American Heart Association, the Longest Day Foundation, and Project Hope helping to support victims of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. As it stands, Fallout for Hope has raised over $400,000 since 2020, and has almost 500 volunteers in over 80 different countries. This year, the community is once again teaming up with St. Jude Children's Hospital, continuing to raise money for the ongoing battle against pediatric cancers and other illnesses that affect children. This year, Fallout for Hope will be joined by some huge names in the gaming industry, including voice actors like Wes Johnson, the iconic voice of Duke Nukem's John St. John, 
Ellen McLean, Paul Eating, and a swath of other voice acting talents that you're not going to want to miss. In fact, as you're watching this, Fallout for Hope's main event is going on right now. Check the link in the description and go support this outstanding cause and enjoy the best of what the community has to offer. For now though, that's going to be it for this video. This question is going to be a bit different than normal, but I am curious to know what charities you've supported in the past. We all do what we can to help those around us and those in need, so get a little braggadocious and tell us about a time that you've helped out for a good cause. Let's fill the comments with holiday spirit. Until next time, I thank you all so much for watching, happy holidays, and I will see you all out there in the wasteland.